Greetings, Game Cola faithful, and welcome to the Game Cola Improv Class. Uh, wait, no, sorry, the Game Cola Adventure Cast. I'm James Pelster, a staff writer for GameCola.net, and this is a role playing game based on the Space Quest series of comedic sci fi adventure games by Sierra. This adventure was originally outlined by the venerable Nathaniel Hoover a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, and then completed and hosted by yours truly. Participating as players in this potentially perilous or plotting podcast are fellow Game Cola staff members. Uh, I'm going to introduce the characters, and then their players will introduce themselves and what they have in their inventory. First up is Roger, the blonde-haired buffoon who's managed to save the galaxy several times over, somehow. Yes, somehow. I Don't ask me how, because I was just along for the ride. <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, my name is Roger. I'm wearing, wearing my usual space captain uniform. Uh, in my inventory, I currently have a spike, a plunger, uh, a pile of broken electronics, a communicator that I'm not sure is working, but I'm pretty sure it will sometime, uh, a stick... An empty oxygen mask, a punched business card, and the whole punch that went with it, the, a used up uh, plasma cutting torch, and exactly four abucazoids. Clarification, not a spike, the spike. The <laughs> spike. He's an acid piddling uh, face hugger alien. <laughs> so, we love him dearly. Yes. You should buddy. also probably say your actual name. Oh, yeah, those. so Roger, <laughs> yes, Roger Wilco. Roger Wilco being oh, yes. played and by John me, Rizzi. John Rizzi. Yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> right, you're John, John Rizzi. Rizzi. Okay. You son All right. Uh, <laughs> All right, I'm not sure how we're going to edit that one up. Uh, we don't. <laughs> it's okay, fine. Okay, fair enough. All right, next up is Ambassador Beatrice Wankmeister, the blonde-haired beauty bombshell and Roger's faded wife-to-be. Played by Nathaniel Hoover. I've got an, uh, I, well, Beatrice has a, an ambassador ID card. A small bag containing various snacks from the Goliath, the ship that she was on before she joined this wacky crew. And a self-defense taser. Next up is Drool, the helmsman and tactical officer from the SCS Eureka, Roger's former ship. He has a red skin, two large eyes, no mouth, and wears a strange silver apparatus around his head. Hello, I'm Rumpro Drool, tonight played by your Game Cola resident, Leaf. I have a blaster that uh, has a randomized power setting, so you never quite know what's going to come out of the end of it. A ping pong paddle that has a ball attached to a string. Um, uh, the device on my head that we call headphones, I like to think that it doesn't <laughs> actually connect to my communicator, but lets me block out everything else that's happening around me. Uh, I do have a nice. communicator. I keep it off most of the time. And I have a whoopee <laughs> cushion. But don't tell anyone about that one. <laughs> All right. Next up is Flo, the navigational and communications officer of the Eureka. She has green skin and a green beehive haircut, and as well as a general pouty and unhappy disposition. Is it a haircut or is it actually part of your head? <laughs> I'm not sure, uh, but but that will uh, flow will be played by me, uh, yours truly, Alex the Jedi Jedrzak. Um I have just the essentials: um, gossip magazine, hairpins, um, and also uh, my communicator and tra translator gizmo. Very good. Hopefully, some of those will come in useful. Uh, next up, we have Cliffy, the engineering officer from the Eureka. Despite what you might think, he is not, in fact, Scottish. He is just an alien. I'm Space Scottish, <laughs> played by Joseph Martin, which means that Space Scottish sounds an awful lot like someone from not Scotland. <laughs> this going to be a long but night. But I'm doing me best. <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing great. It's... I've got a self-lighting cigar, a wrench. Large screwdriver and a communicator, which I use to communicate just like this. <laughs> Accent is very quickly Ooh. fading. Somebody get Accent. this man a beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to go with his cigar. We have to go with his cigar. It should be wine. Oh, is that? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, is that <laughs> canon? Wait, well, I was gonna. What, what if you had some uh, scotch? Ooh, scotch. Scotch. that would. <laughs> right. That's even better. The Scottish. It's the Scottish <laughs> scotch. Yeah. <laughs> yep, space scotch. Um, and last but not least, we have WD forty, who is the. Uh, Killer android turned science officer of the SCS Eureka. I'm Blue Rider, and I will be your robot for the evening. I have a come with built in communicator hardware, jetpack, and one shot of liquid nitrogen, which I assume goes well with scotch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it chills the uh, drinks. That's definitely what it's uh, used for. Unlike our previous RPG casts, this one isn't based around stats and die rolls. Rather, we'll be treating this as an adventure game with a hyper-intelligent text parser interface. One that <laughs> actually understands you when you wow. type in nonsense. What? Subtle brag. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so it will it will actually understand you when you type in nonsense commands like because it's I don't a know. genius. Yes, <laughs> it is. It's a genius. So if you say something like "attach utility belt to water buffalo," it will actually know what you mean. Uh, you practically still won't be able every to do challenge. It. <laughs> but yeah, it won't be able. It may not be able to help you, but it'll know what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> practically every challenge in this adventure has multiple solutions, including inevitably ones I haven't thought of, and I'll award points for completing certain challenges, some of which are optional, so it's possible to finish with fewer than the full 300 points. That being said, the goal of this adventure is to reach the end by any means conceivable, so if you'd like to consider everything to be made up and the points not mattering, that's okay too. We're not all completionists after all. Each character has something that they are especially good at, and they each have their own unique inventory. And, of course, given that this is a space quest adventure, the heroes will probably get killed off at some point. Perhaps many times. Likely on purpose. <laughs> That's why I'm giving everyone unlimited retries on fatal decisions. This adventure isn't about if you get to the end, it's about how. So let's have some fun along the way, why don't we? Any questions before we dig in? There are points? Yes, there are points. The I games look, have points. I look up so at the title bar. I look up at the title cheating, bar for the right? podcast. Uh, how many mm -hmm. points do we currently have? Uh, you currently have negative uh, one. What? All of us? Or is, yeah, are the I, points? I, I don't know what happened. Joe, what did you do? <laughs> okay, so the text parser isn't that intelligent. <laughs> the text parser of Space Quest Four was pretty descriptive of the UI, if I recall. Yep. <laughs> so yes, you look up at the status line. Uh, it currently says Space Quest uh, <laughs> five point five Adventure Cast. You have negative one out of three hundred points. I don't know where you're seeing this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Asterisk Space Quest Four didn't have a text parser. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. You just had buttons that you would click. But also for people who don't know what's happening, uh, a quick breakdown of Space Quest and its adventures. Roger Wilco is the man whose name strikes fear in the hearts of Sarians and soap scum alike. From his humble beginnings as a sanitation engineer, Roger has inadvertently saved the galaxy several times along his journey. With the help of his patented dumb luck, along with judicious saving and no doubt a walkthrough or five, Roger has rescued his home planet of Xenon from certain demise due to the theft of their incredible star generator. He's thwarted the plans of his nemesis, Sludge Vohal, to invade Xenon with a clone army of insurance salesmen. He's beat the high score of Astro Chicken in the arcade and liberated the two guys from Andromeda from the crooked clutches of Scumsoft. Then, he evaded Scumsoft. Vohal's sequel police through his own past, present, and future, defeating the nemesis once again in the process. And most recently, he's literally cheated his way to the rank of captain at Starcon Academy, found his wife-to-be, and stopped a terrible mutagen from spreading throughout the galaxy. There are rumors of other adventures that could be mentioned in this list, such as the one with cave bees, Ugh. <laughs> or, the one, <laughs> or the one where Roger was killed repeatedly by an awful, awful giant squid but it's the latest adventure that's most important for our purposes today 
I would like to point out that I put this entire list of accomplishments on my resume, and all I got in return was a stern, <laughs> what the hell is this? Well, that's because you put down <laughs> that you played Astro Chicken in the arcade and not a monolith burger. Ah, <laughs> I knew it. It's always that. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, <laughs> Roger, this is all your fault. As you purged. I knew I shouldn't have asked you to write this. <laughs> In fact, our story begins at the conclusion of Roger's latest adventure, Space Quest V. During the ending sequence, no less, Captain Wilco has just taken command of Starcon's flagship, the SCS Goliath, assisted and accompanied by his fated female, Beatrice Wankmeister, his acid-piddling pet facehugger, Spike, and his semi-loyal crew, Cliffy the Engineer, Drool the Helmsman and Tactical Officer, Flo the Communications and Nav Officer, and WD-40, the killer android turned science officer. You see, the Goliath had been illegally dumping toxic waste, stuff so vile that it turned the whole crew into hideous monsters. Roger, in command of the SCS Eureka at the time, yes, you, Roger Wilco, space guy, hey. snuck aboard the Goliath via the old fly your EVA pod to the engineering section and cut a hole through the hull with a blowtorch routine and managed to disable the ship's shield so that Cliffy could beam aboard and rig the transporter to return the crew to normal. While the half-dozen or so remaining crew members of the Goliath were restored to their former selves, albeit dazed and exhausted from the process, their mad captain escaped to continue spreading the infection, and it took the self-destruction of the Eureka to stop him. With no more captain and the crew out of commission, Roger assumed the command of the Goliath, which is at this very second jumping to light speed in the direction of Starbase 22. In this moment, high on victory, Sitting in the captain's chair of the most powerful starship in the fleet with the woman of his destiny by his side, surrounded by subordinates who, for the first time, aren't feigning respect, all is right in Roger Wilco's universe. Unfortunately, that moment lasts, well, only a moment, because I decided to do an adventure cast. The Goliath suddenly drops out of light speed with a shudder, and klaxons begin blaring all over the ship. Something like this happened to Roger once when he was in training at the Academy. But there's no way anyone could have had time to start popping popcorn in the warp reactor on such short notice. The Goliath shudders again, and suddenly all of the control panels and lights cut out, throwing everyone into complete darkness. A few moments later, you hear the quiet hum of the emergency generator kicking in, and the ship's interior is bathed in a dim white light. Your orders, Captain Wilco? Roger, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Drool, do me a favor. Hit as many buttons as you can and just see what just see what happens. <laughs> okay, I do that. Yeah. All right. You press buttons. Beep 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 beep. Uh most of them uh return errors. You do see um the Goliath phaser array just pshoo, 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 at which point the lights dim considerably. Uh that seems to have used uh a decent amount of power. I think that helped. <laughs> I think it did too. I'm sure the light show was appreciative to anyone nearby. Flo, status updates. Uh, these lights are making it awfully hard to read this magazine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, that's less than helpful. I'll, uh, I'll, I turn on my communicator. Cliffy, what the hell's going on here? I'm giving her all she's got, Captain! <laughs> what does she got, Cliffy? <laughs> you hear a very loud crunch um, that is, dis even through the communicators, distinctly audible as uh, popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, by the way, for, for that uh, remark, by the way, you get five points. Um, oh. <laughs> Uh, so, as a quick status update that uh, you just begin to discern overall, uh, a huge explosion originated from engineering. Apparently, EVA pods, which aren't securely fastened to the exterior of a ship, have a tendency to fall off at light speed, which in this case left nothing to cover up the big hole that Roger cut through the side of the hull to board the ship. Whatever sensitive equipment wasn't sucked out into space was warp-warped, that is, twisted out of shape by direct exposure to the voodoo science of light speed travel, leaving the engine room in such disarray that you'd think this was the aftermath of a rock concert. Large chunks of the ship are now missing entirely or damaged beyond traversal. Furthermore, since much of the ship's containment and regulation equipment is now offline, things that don't normally explode are beginning to consider that this might be a fun time to try something new. 
This and of course, Cliffy's my... popping popcorn. Yeah, I, I take another <laughs> bite of my popcorn as I survey the uh, the situation. <laughs> All right. As a quick uh, aside, by the way, Cliffy uh, was up with everyone in sort of the upper uh, top deck of the uh, of the Goliath at this time. So he was uh, fortunately not sucked out into space with the most of the engineering section. So Damn. there's just there's just a microwave nearby for your popcorn. Ah, if only I had my blowtorch, then maybe <laughs> I could have fixed this up. But it mysteriously disappeared. <laughs> I Along look with at the my blow accent. Tor- I, look- <laughs> <laughs> I look at the blowtorch in my pocket and see it's all used up. And be like, yeah, it's a real shame you don't have that. And I drop it below, kick it to the other side of the room. <laughs> uh, is anyone else thinking we should abandon ship? I know where, well, I know where the escape pods used to be. <clears throat> that is an excellent idea. Uh, Drool, go check on those. See if they're still there. Um... I have my headphones on and I'm not listening. <laughs> I'm just enjoying the light show and the things that are starting to explode. <laughs> Flo, go check on those escape pods. <laughs> <sighs> Fine. I go and I check. All right, you uh, you bring up the status readouts. Uh, unfortunately, the section of the ship where the escape pods were... Uh, is no longer attached. You left it about, uh, you know, in the mid. You're in. You're at light speed, so you would estimate mm, about one and a half light years back. WD forty. So, how long will just, it take you to fly Just a quick turn around. You know, you can go back and get it. Um, <laughs> sorry, what did Roger ask? WD forty. How long will it take you to fly and get those back to us? How far away are they? About one and a half <laughs> light years. Hmm. Significantly longer than a year. (laughs) (laughs) At least one and a half years. Roger, I'm not sure that you did well enough in math to verify whether that's true or not, but you, you, you imagine she probably knows best. Beatrice, what are our other options? Well, we have a transporter, but we need somewhere to transport to that isn't the vacuum of space. Honestly, anywhere anywhere else is better than here. Not the vacuum of space. <laughs> <laughs> it's widely considered to be worse than your current situation. So do, we... do we have access to space clothes? Uh, <laughs> no, there doesn't seem to be any uh, sort of EVA room in the area of the ship that you currently uh, that, that is that is currently intact. WD-40, you're a robot. Do you have any safe coordinates that we can plug in so that we can get out of here? Keyword safe coordinates. Do I? What, what sort of litter <laughs> options here? You, you're a- well, I mean, you <laughs> you can just continue. You, you could check around the ship. You could uh, try. You do have a comms uh, panel with which you could try to hail to any nearby uh, planets or systems. I also, assume, you know, I also assumed you had I've an internal database because you're been, a robot. Oh, gosh, this is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> around a ship. Quite some time, and I think that most come with some sort of pla- uh, planet scouting devices that perhaps scan the nearby quadrants and let us know where Lizzie, the planets might be. You sound the... a little constipated there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was the popcorn. <laughs> Is, Flo, uh, do you have an issue of the Galactic Inquirer on you? Maybe we can look up a planet coordinate and plug it in. <laughs> are the scanners even working? Yeah, uh, what is our compute like? What are systems? And the bigger question is, do we actually have any kind of maneuverability? I assume the back half <laughs> of the ship got blown off. Yeah, you, you currently doesn't seem to... There's currently no propulsion system left available onto you One on the ship. One crisis However, at a time. Not, <laughs> not to worry. Not to worry. This is all, it's fine. <laughs> not to worry. This is We're all one big crisis. We have to find somewhere to go before we go. So yeah. Not to worry. We are still flying. Before step two. Yeah. We are still flying available half a ship. You, yes, you still have half a ship. So currently available to you on the bridge... Are the uh, you do have a navigational sensor array which is attached to the the half of the ship that is with you, um, and you 
probably have enough power to use it, uh, as well as your communications, uh, which could probably hail a, a planet if you were to find one. Let's do that. Then let's find a planet. Commence so, scanning. Point. All right, you scan. Uh, most systems are well without of the teleporter range, but you do find one planet uh, nearby. Uh, that appears to be able to support uh, humanoid life. In fact, it appears that there may even be some uh, small form of settlement on it. Does this planet have a name? <laughs> no. Oh, <that's> <laughs> it's called it's called PNF four oh four. Ship starts uh -huh. creaking around uh, around us. <laughs> Probably won't ma yes. last much longer. <laughs> yes. I, I'm just gonna say. Let's do it. <laughs> Just try it. Engage. Go. All right. So you, yeah. So the 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 planet appears to be. Uh, so at at this point, you actually uh, receive an incoming transmission. Oh. Oh. Transmission received, Captain. Ah, uh, put him on hold. <laughs> yes, Captain. <laughs> Let's focus on getting there first. <laughs> All right. So we. Uh, so what are so what are we doing? Are we accepting the transmission or trying to beam off somewhere that we've I was never told been? To put them on hold. So all right, so we're putting them on hold. Uh, Beatrice, yep. you were trying to say something. Respectfully, Captain Wilco, I think any communication would be welcome right now. Uh, Respectfully, you're right. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Me not wanting not wanting to screw up any future events I have with Beatrice, I reluctantly <laughs> accept her request. All right, answer the call. <laughs> All right, you uh, you answer the call, and it's uh, it's voice only. It says, "Greetings from the tourist attraction of Aquarium." This you're not gonna <laughs> call by my car insurance, I gotta, are you? I gotta scroll <laughs> to my I gotta scroll to my notes. I'm sorry, I have two documents. That's a weird message. Welcome to Aquarium. <laughs> Hang on, I have to scroll through my notes. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It, it's his first day. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this is the administrator of Aquatic Quandaries under Advanced Robotic Investigation Underwater Museum. Your ship appears to be in state of distress. Do you need assistance? No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Press one. <laughs> Understood. If you need coordinates for beaming, please do -do 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 enter here. I enter. All right. So you receive a series of coordinates for transporting down. Excellent. I <laughs> put those into the system, and I, I, I ask everyone, are, are you ready to be safe, or should we linger in... Distress a little while longer. I don't know. The excitement <laughs> of this distress is really intoxicating. <laughs> is, is there anything we want to grab before we leave? <laughs> uh, you are welcome to uh, examine around the uh, the area. There is there's the transporter room, which doesn't seem to have anything particularly interesting in it. There is the medical bay and the bridge, uh, although due to the chaos of the whole uh you know alien or the mutagenic invasion and then roger and his crew's uh hostile takeover uh there are all of the weapons and such like you know standard issue med kits and phasers have all been uh unfortunately exhausted cliffy is down to the transporter room to uh get things set up yeah so you you do see actually in the corner of your eye one remaining uh standard issue med kit yes all right do 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 Who's got that get one? another five points. <laughs> uh, who would like to pick that up? I'll take it. Okay. Flo has the med kit. Go ahead and take note of that. All right. So are we heading to transport down? The, the, the robot administrator is just like, is there anything else I can assist you with? Do you have breathable atmosphere? <laughs> for, yes. for humans and hu similar? Yes. <laughs> Well, that's the a nice change the, of pace. The atmosphere, the atmosphere is roughly 75% nitrogen, 12% oxygen. I'm bad at math, sorry. <laughs> I <screwed> that up. <laughs> I'm like, and the remaining? <laughs> and, and remaining amounts of 
trace chemicals that are generally not harmful to humanoids. Generally. Generally. <laughs> Beats the vacuum of space. I was going to say, 12% <laughs> oxygen is better than 0% oxygen. <laughs> yeah. I think that's breathable. Everyone especially grab- for someone without a mouth. <laughs> Everyone grab what you need that aren't magazines and le- and let's go. Hey. Uh, all right. I, <laughs> so I, everyone's I, ready, I... I need these. <laughs> I pause for a minute before I enter the transporter room, and I put my hand on my forehead, and I say, oh, the Star Confederacy is going to have a fit over their flagship ending up like this. I take out one of my packets of snacks, airline peanuts, and I pour them out on the captain's chair and shape them to say, we're sorry, and then I hop <laughs> on the transporter pad. <laughs> All right. You'd like to, uh, the transporter, uh, was recently modified by Cliffy to be, uh, voice activated. Wow. Transport on. All right. Transporter <laughs> activates. And I believe the crew of the Goliath would still be unconscious or in various shades of not well, uh, on yes. the transporter pad with us, correct? Yes, that's correct. Sorry, I meant to. Yeah, so they're they're all sitting there on the transporter pad. So you just fortunately, it's it's a very large transporter pad. All right, we so, all join right. hands together, even with the unconscious all right. people. So you you the Especially surroundings with fade the out. Just people. Yeah, yeah. The surroundings fade out on the ship. Uh, as the surroundings fade in, you get a sinking feeling, and then like a very we're wet sinking feeling. underwater. Yeah. Yes, and then a very <laughs> drowning feeling. It seems that the coordinates you were given were located a significant distance underwater. Perhaps there's been a misunderstanding somewhere? But hey, at least you made it off the ship. How do I do with water? I don't recall. Not very well. Uh, You all perish very rapidly. (laughs) Fantastic. And we we, we rewind, we reload uh, back on board the ship as you are talking with the, uh, the robot administrator of Aquarium. Uh, <laughs> sir, where exactly will these coordinates take us? Well, as you are the hominoid species, you've been <laughs> placed uh, approximately 700 meters underwater next to the location of Aquarium. Can you, request... can you increase that altitude by about 700 meters? Understood. Increase? Could we, Currently could we at maybe sea actually level... be on land? And not in water. I don't mm-hmm. care how above the water we are. I'd like to not be in it at all. Understood. Well, I think we should care how far above <laughs> <You're right. laughs> we are, perhaps. <laughs> slightly. There are many important considerations. <laughs> perhaps uh, I would like in to the be facility placed... that has been described. I would like Understood. to be placed on top of land. With my feet Understood. on the land. <laughs> let's, let's, not, have... let's not make more requests than necessary, because we may not be understood at one point. <laughs> the, the, the text parser interface is hyper-intelligent. This administrator is not. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone so here an... speak unintelligent administrator? Uh, yes, Roger. Roger. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. What do you uh, think I've been doing? The, the, I was going to say, does my translator the, help with that? Uh, no, unfortunately, <laughs> it can't speak stupid. <laughs> it's why it's why you have a hard time dealing with Roger so often. <laughs> yes. So um, the the administrator says it says suitable coordinates su- suitable surface coordinates have been found. Transmitting. Do 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 do, and they appear on the uh, the nav uh, computer screen. All right, we speed up the the speed of the game and re- redo the whole <laughs> yes. teleporter. Zoom. Uh, yeah, do the right. whole speed and the med again. kit. Grab the medical yep, kit. Yep, grab yeah. the med kit. Leave yeah. the leave the peanuts on the leave chair. The uh, make sure yeah. that the that the Goliath crew is is uh, there. All right. We hold hands with the unconscious people. <laughs> All right, you you hold sing kumbaya. <laughs> Sorry. Way to go. Yep. yep. All right. So your surroundings fade out. And they fade back in, and you are not uh, drowning or uh, stuck in the middle of the earth. Uh, cool. Looking up in the sky, you gl- you catch a spectacular glimpse of a very bright flash of light. It's the Goliath exploding, along with all your hopes and dreams. <laughs> and my peanuts! <laughs> <Yes. Aww. laughs> 
<laughs> Starcon is not going to be happy about this, Roger. Blowing up two ships in one day might have made you a hero if they weren't your own ships. Let's try not to blow up anything else important. Looking around, you find yourselves in a large, flat-bottomed pit, roughly 20 feet deep with vertical sides, which Damn contains it. several piles of a dark gray, dirt-like substance, as well as a large heap of steel I-beams and an upside-down bulldozer. There's a small uh, pair of shovels sticking out of one of the dirt piles, although they look a tad flimsy. The dirt piles are all located near the sides of the pit, but none of them are large enough or close enough to the sides to allow you to climb out of the pit as is. I knew we should have asked I go that over request to the bulldozer <laughs> and begin to inspect uh, how functional it might be. I, obviously, the upside down, that will be a, a, a particular consideration, but... If it's even yep. worth considering anything further than that. Yeah, so the bulldozer looks to be in general good working order. All of the components, except for the drive mechanism, are present. So it, it cannot locomote. It cannot move on its own, but all other aspects will work. The bucket and the, uh, the plow, basically. Not the plow, but whatever it's called. The scoop on the front can be moved and adjusted, and uh, you can turn and rotate, etc., so we can just leave it upside down, since it can't move when it's right side up anyway. Well, not under its own power anyway. Mm, mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to investigate the gray dirt-like substance, please. <laughs> okay, the gray dirt-like substance uh, is generally, it's it's very dense feeling. It, it, so for all intents and purposes, it feels uh, like any dirt on any planet you've been to, although very particularly dense, uh, slightly refre- reflective a little bit. Um, so, but uh, other than that, generally unremarkable. Captain, I'd like to point out that it is very suspicious that this dirt seems so dense and the shovels seem incredibly flimsy. You're right, it is suspicious. Here, take my stick and poke at it for a bit. <laughs> uh, I take my blaster and I shoot at it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it uh, it comes out rather weak. Uh, it just leaves a uh, a minor scorch mark on the dirt, but it uh, leaves a rather interesting uh, purple colored char. I laugh and say, "Cool." <laughs> <laughs> so, are we currently uh, standing on like a pile of workers from the ship? Uh. I mean, you're not standing on them, but they're all kind of piled up in a heap. I, I assumed you like, I mean, if you want to say that you just walked on top of them to get to the transporter, we can say that, but I'm still I holding hands you would be, you would at least treat them like human beings. Yes. Beatrice, can you do us a favor and try to wake up, me. wake up some of these people so we have more than it, one working brain between all of us? I get out my taser. <laughs> 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 uh, Good tase work. As you might, tase as you might, the crew are completely exhausted uh, and very completely out of it. They uh, are not going to be waking up or, or being useful to you in any capacity for uh, what you would guess would be quite a long time. So the length of the uh, Say so the span of an adventure cast? Uh, perhaps. Uh I- ignoring the um the bulldozer, could we pile them up in a way to walk uh, on them out of the pit? <laughs> no. Are there enough uh, of them? I uh, I don't. Hey hey hey! The... Let's not do anything inhumane, okay? <laughs> yeah, let's let's not commit As I put away my taser. Starcon might need to cite you for. <laughs> I tried. How many yep. how many people Worldwide. tall is this pit? Uh. It is, it's 20 feet tall, so approximately, if you were to all basically form a human ladder, one person could probably get out, uh, in theory. Like, you just might be able to just barely get there. I call top of the ladder. How would uh, Spike be able to climb up? (laughs) Uh, I have a jetpack. Yes, WD-40 oh. <laughs> does have a jetpack. <laughs> but no, let's go back to your plan. No. You to do that with the little face hugger? <laughs> um, Spike that, that, uh, does that, not that. seem to easily be able to climb vertical walls, unfortunately. Not even uh, clothes? I thought we were making mm-hmm. a ladder for Spike to climb up. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> are we, what are we doing? Ignore that. As captain, <laughs> as captain, I'm ordering WD-40 to carry Beatrice up to the top and scope out the place first. All right. Why is Beatrice How heroic sending me in? Because you're going to shoot everything on sight, Leaf. <laughs> Keep us safe! <laughs> so I, I grab Beatrice, hopefully comfortably without crushing her or anything. Yeah. And then I see if I can even, like, jetpack high enough to get her safely onto the onto the ledge or where. The, right. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so your jetpack is functional, but uh, still was a little bit damaged from the uh, the encounter with Roger in Space Quest V. However, you are able to carry Beatrice and yourself up out of the pit uh, and land on the ground above. So outside the pit, you now find yourselves in what appears to be the makings of a parking lot with the entrance of a large building just ahead, featuring a large neon sign spelling aquarium with what appears to be a small outside reception area. The parking lot is surrounded on three sides by a gray beach made of the same material as the stuff in the pit and an indigo-colored ocean stretching as far as you can see. I pull out my communicator. Uh, can I take WD-40 a, Beatrice, what do you a see? sample of the substance? Uh, yes, you can. You are the science officer, uh, so you can, uh, scan and analyze the material. Uh, it's, uh, it's largely carbon-based, you believe. Mm. I so use the tongue icon on people. it. <laughs> mm, tastes like pencil lead. What do we do with this information? <laughs> uh, so... so- are, are the rest of us still in the pit? Yes. Yes, the rest of you are still yes. in the pit. So so WD-40 and Beatrice are just, you ordered them to go, so they're up there out of the pit, so you're just sitting around. Yeah. You do I have communicators, though, as mentioned. <laughs> Hypothetically, did, does WD-40's jetpack work well enough for her to come back down and get us all one by one? Uh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> didn't, it, w, didn't WD-40's... Uh, jetpack have a limited supply. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a little limited, so you might, if you were to do that, you might worry that it would use up all of your uh, ability to use the jetpack. Okay, so. that's the information I needed. So, who wants to be shot so that I can actually go? We can't all go. <laughs> who wants to die? <laughs> As captain, I am uh, telling you to belay that thought. Forever, Cliffy. How, how's <laughs> that? Uh, uh, Cliffy has climbed into the bulldozer and is uh, uh, upside down. Yeah. Well, no. Well, the bulldozer upside down. Cliffy <laughs> is not. Um, <laughs> Cliffy is looking to see uh, what would. Uh, I'm gonna just grab the lever that moves the um, moves the you know dozer part of the bulldozer mm-hmm. uh, and uh, just. Pull it shit as far in one direction as possible, assuming I have figured out how to turn it on. Yes, you have, and you managed to, by basically smacking the uh, the dozer against the ground really uh, rapidly, to actually basically pop the dozer up into a an upright position. Consequently, oh. putting myself in an downright position. Upside down <laughs> position, yes. So you, your head is now me. currently at the pedals. <laughs> I uh, very discreetly sidle over to the bulldozer and place my whoopee cushion on the chair. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I consequently right myself, uh, brush my uh, legs off, and prepare to sit on the couch on the sort of seat uh, so that I can operate the bulldozer. I am vibrating with anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> At which point there is a loud, and you can, uh, loud enough that uh, Beatrice and uh, WD-40 can hear it outside the pit, just, <laughs> Oh, Cliffy. <laughs> I mentally uh, take a, a list of, a mental list that I have, cross out popcorn from the list of foods <laughs> I can eat without getting indigestion. <laughs> <laughs> Even just a wee bit of popcorn. Too much for me. Um, I'm going to... uh, So my plan is to get the other folks here 
um, who are willing to get out of the willing and able to get out of the pit and <laughs> um, uh, basically get in the bulldo the, the dozer part of the bulldozer. Um, and uh, I'll lift it up, and hopefully that is high enough that they can sort of be reached by Beatrice and WD-40 who are standing up at the top of the pit. That's sort of my plan here. Unfortunately, it is not quite tall enough to get them uh, in within arm's reach. However, a thought occurs to you that although the dozer can't move on its own, you might be able to push it. Wait, which way is it facing relative to the pit? Uh, it's currently facing, actually conveniently, towards, since you popped it upright, it is now facing towards a large pile of grayish dirt, which is vaguely uh-huh. near one of the walls of the pit. All right. It's time to give her all we got! <laughs> I, I, just, I start. I start pushing. <laughs> right. and I kind of look around like I, I. I feel like that was pretty clear. My intention here. Yeah. I order the remaining us to get the remaining of us in the pit to give Cliffy a hand, per se. All right. You I do push give the... a hand, but before I do that, I swipe the whoopee cushion off of the chair because <laughs> I want that back. Back in your inventory. All right. So you push the dozer, uh, and using it, you are able to just barely push this big pile of dirt into just the right position while uh, presumably someone hops into the dozer and operates the bucket, which is still, or the uh, the dozer mechanism itself, to basically build yourself a, a nice path uh, out of the pit. Woo! Good work, everyone. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Congratulations. You have earned 25 points. Wow. Yeah. And I forgot to mention that you also gain uh, 10 points for getting off of the ship without it exploding. But it did explode. <laughs> well, it, well, with <laughs> while you were on board. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Meanwhile, you're, uh, you're now out in the... Are there any- yeah, so, so <laughs> WD-40 and Beatrice just got out of this pit, and then they just hear what appears to be a loud raspberry sound, and then <laughs> everyone, we've got to give it all we've got, <laughs> followed by loud noises of, uh, you know, equipment, and then uh, everyone emerges from the pit. And, str- and stress as we all push the, bu- the bulldozer. Don't forget that. Yes, yeah, so everyone is heaving, uh, and they're all just confused why this was all preceded by the sound of a large raspberry noise. Uh, are there any cars in this parking lot? There mm. are not. Mm. It is very barren. However, there mm. are... Closed on a Sunday, uh, I see. Yeah, so there is uh, a few things, just like there's a, 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 a cork board near the entrance to the place. There is also a... Uh, a lone refreshment stand tended to by a uh, Sarian who appears to be very surprised to see all of you emerge from this pit, <laughs> as well as a what looks like a receptionist tending the uh, the entrance. Do we have any money? Yeah. Roger has four buckazoids. Four buckazoids. <laughs> four buckazoids. <laughs> that's, that's yes, four whole buckazoids. Uh. So, like but that's uh, collectively would, that's all the money you have. Before we decide to spend I, anything, I would like to converse with these fine people. All right, who are you conversing with first? The Sarian refreshment stand vendor or the uh, the uh, receptionist? I'm a little parched. I can get go for a refreshment. <laughs> all right. Yes. So you approach the Sarian, uh, and he uh, speaks absolute gibberish. Uh, I step forward. Uh, uh, all right, all right, Roger. What do you want? <laughs> uh, <laughs> if they have anything similar to lemonade, oh, that would be very, very helpful. Make that too. <laughs> uh, I request uh, three <laughs> lemonades <laughs> using my translator. <laughs> I could use a drink, but uh, let's let's see what they have first. <laughs> So the, the the Syrian is, of course, just very confused as to why these people who just emerged from a pit are just immediately going straight to asking for refreshments. But on the second thought of, of all the uh, the straining he heard earlier, they probably worked up uh, quite a sweat. Uh, so he uh, 
he has uh actually he also sells hot dogs uh but he also sells a variety of uh galacticola products uh one of those which is uh yellow aid that's yellow (laughs) y-e-l-l-o a-i-d uh which is uh by far the most caffeinated lemon drink (laughs) this side of the galaxy (laughs) Sign me up, please. Uh, I decide. Also, to, I decide to pass oh, on that then. <laughs> okay. He also sells uh, a really very what what he says is a very refreshing super chill drink. He says uh, it'll it'll chill you down from the inside out. I want the caffeine. <laughs> Can I get a diet yellow aid? <laughs> <laughs> diet yellow aid. <laughs> Um, there, there is only, there is only diet, or there is only regular and anti-diet, unfortunately. <laughs> Ooh, what anti-diet are the, for me, please. What are the prices for all these products? Uh, so the Yellow Aid is currently, uh, one Buckazoid each. Uh, the Super Chill, uh, if you wanted one. Uh, oh yeah, all, all of the refreshments would be one Buckazoid. A, uh, the hot dogs are uh, are still thawing, so they're currently not for sale. But if they were, they would be five buckazoids. <laughs> Damn! If if we get them before they're thawed, are they still five? <laughs> he hands you a, a frozen hot dog. I put it on the back of my neck <laughs> to cool down. <laughs> so if only I, there I was some. Uh... Yeah, never mind. Any, right. Anybody in the crew? Uh, anyone thirsty? Do you want anything? Can yellow I aid? can I get that anti diet um, yellow aid, please? <laughs> please keep in mind, I only have four buckets of it, so I believe it will be best if anyone if everyone would get one item. I got us a free <laughs> hot dog, and I don't think that counts as my <laughs> item. So, no, I think they are pretty satisfied as per now. That is your one item. <laughs> I'm pretty upset. <laughs> it was my idea to come here, and I feel like yeah. I deserve more. <laughs> I only drink diet yellow aid. <laughs> So I, one of each. <laughs> so we're, we're getting so that would be so that would be a uh, a super chill, uh, a yellow aid and an anti diet yellow aid. Is that right? Well, and and there's also a Galacticola, which only comes in one flavor because it's the only flavor you'll ever need. <laughs> that tracks. Roger, I'll, could I impose on you for that chili drink? I will pay for everyone's refreshments except the fro- free frozen hot dog. <laughs> well, yeah, so that, that, that should you're, you're, that would... should that should round out to me paying my full four buckets of weights. Please let the record show that that frozen hot dog is in my inventory now. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and add it. I have. So, uh, you uh, oh, by the way, for uh, for getting a hot dog, you you get uh, you're or for for just buying something from him, you get uh, you get five points. Yes. Cool. All right, so we've bought. Uh, so whoever whoever gets each respective drink, uh, I think we said Beatrice gets the super chill. Uh, who wants the uh, the anti diet and who wants the regular <laughs> lemon, uh, yellow aid? Oh, and are we getting a Galacticola as well? I'm take a battery. Acid, well, one of each, please. right? Well, that's. I mean, Galacticola would p- probably serve as battery acid. Uh, if you, if you <laughs> oh, so it's out. Moxie. <laughs> 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 why is this easier than ordering a pizza with me and my friends <laughs> why is this the hardest puzzle to solve so far <laughs> I will take the anti-diet we lemonade have if we can move on to, to the go. next scene yeah. please yeah. we haven't encountered right, yes. a door yet so. yes we haven't even gotten to the door so we so we buy in order so I'm going to so I'm putting anti-diet say, lemonade in my inventory so all that right, you have the anti-diet continue. lemonade yeah, I'm glaring at Cliffy uh, yeah, uh, we can say that uh, we can say that WD forty takes the Galacticola, Roger takes the uh, the regular Yellow Aid, and, and Beatrice <laughs> takes the Super Chill. All right, and we uh, we're approaching the receptionist now. Be- yes. Before we go, I want to take a closer look at the Sarian. Um, any anything noteworthy about the appearance or uniform or anything? Uh, no, nothing in particular. Uh, I, his name tag says uh, Butts and Freem. It's a good name. It's a good name. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you go up and talk to the receptionist. Uh, so she uh, is a 
young looking alien woman with paley blue skin, fins on her arms and legs, and what looks like a, uh, a dolphin or shark tail hanging down from the, the back of her head. It's just the general way that is her it head is. Is it flat, like a, or is it like vertical yeah. up and down? It's uh, flat. Okay. So that would be like a dolphin. That would be a dolphin. Oh, yeah. Like a, yeah. <laughs> right. Shark or dolphin. Uh, no, dolphin. Hey, Sharks shark don't look vertical. like that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. The, right, the writers were not uh, brushing up on their aquatic life. <laughs> Mammals have up and down spines, and fish have side to side spines. That's why they look like that. And I'm sure this right. rule applies in space as well. Yeah. So, so she um, sees you approaching, and she says, uh, "Hi, can I help you all?" In English. Uh, yes. Space glitch. Yeah, space. Yeah, well, <laughs> Z- Xenonian. I don't know. I uh, while this is going on, I crack open my super chill drink and uh, take a couple big swigs just idly <laughs> right. while everyone else is talking. I approach. Right. Uh, I the approach moment the, the drink touches your lips, uh, your whole body feels approximately, uh, you know, like basically like this went from a relatively warm day, and actually now that you're out here in sort of the parking lot area, the heat is is actually radiating up uh, pretty harshly. So it's 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 pretty sweltering out here. But suddenly, it feels like what you would describe as the middle of day in winter. So just suddenly, you're just significantly cooler. Ooh. Can't explain it. Brisk? Cool. <laughs> uh, I, I approach the receptionist's desk. Greetings. My name is Roger Wilco, captain of the bright flashing firework in the sky a few, an hour ago. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I request to humbly speak to the man who has saved our lives and gave us the coordinates to beam down here. I I presume you're talking about the robotic administrator, which is really just kind of a computer that hails the ships nearby Mm. i don't really know who to refer you to uh for the thanking for your saving your lives and all that but uh uh i if i find any person i'll let you know wonderful thank you very much perhaps someone who could get us (laughs) off this planet not that it isn't lovely but that was the next question i was gonna say cliffy please wait your turn (laughs) <laughs> All right. At order? least going inside, it's kind of hot out here. <laughs> uh, it is really hot out here, but unfortunately, aquarium doesn't open for another two months, so I'm afraid I can't let you in here. Then what might you do be doing here, young lass? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, the ticket question. <laughs> it's 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 a long story. Let's just say I got some dates mixed up on a calendar and. My ride is not coming back. Ma'am, if, you, if, you're, uh, if I, you're stuck to this seat, you can tell us. There's no shame in that. I'm not stuck. She's not. She's standing up. <laughs> she's, she's standing basically. <laughs> she, <laughs> he says it anyway. <laughs> if you're stuck to the she floor. She just looks at you confused like, these are my legs. That would have been important information to know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but she's just basically standing. There's basically kind of like a uh, very highly reflective awning that she's standing underneath. But she's kind of like you know fanning herself, and she's like, uh, she's like, she's like strictly speaking, even I'm not really supposed to go in there. You know, if there's a computer that can hail us and give us coordinates from our ship, there's probably the technology in there to. Hail us some uh, perhaps <laughs> passing by ships that could pick us up. All of us, in fact. I could probably make that work. Cliffy, remind what? me to check to have Beatrice <laughs> check on your vocal cords for your, help your changing accent. <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> You're doing a great job. No, no, you are. You are. You are. I'm just, I'm just concerned for you, friend. That's all. <laughs> it is I concerning. said ye. Yeah. But you are like, doing What more do you job. want from me? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to ask more about the hole that we climbed out of. Like, why is it there, and why did the cordon? Why are those the coordinates? We it was uh, a hole. We got out. It's fine. Truth be told, uh, I, I I think it may be malfunctioning. The uh, so the, the hole's not I mean. supposed to be there. 
No, no, no. The 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 ground is malfunctioning as well as the computer. That was a sinkhole. <laughs> cool. I think it still is one. I, yeah. I pipe up. <laughs> I I pipe up and I say, well, we have an engineer, a science officer, and a communications officer who are all excellent at their jobs. I'm sure our team could help fix this computer that's malfunctioning. If you would permit us entry, we'd be happy to provide that service for the aquarium for allowing us to stay here a little while. I. Uh, listen, that's why you're with I'd us, love Beatrice. Love but that's really I, I can't make that call I'm afraid I'm ah but really you can I flash my <laughs> ambassador ID card I say I am an ambassador and I have the authority to authorize this oh all right listen do you have pardon told, power I can all right I'll, yeah all right fine I'll I'll let you in just uh, don't mess with the computer all right I'm we'll we'll see about uh I don't know with all, with all due respect, with all due respect, with a missed hardworking receptionist, what exactly can you do for us? <laughs> she, she just can... was gonna let us in, <laughs> Roger. <laughs> She's gonna let you in. Oh, okay, no, She's I meant... like, <laughs> but before that, I was. <laughs> Shit. Never mind. She's like, <laughs> listen. She's like, listen. If you give me that super chill drink, I will give you my staff ID to let you into the break room. It's not going to get you into any of the areas that'll let you work with the computer, but it'll at least give you somewhere you can, you know, rest, relax. Don't it's do it. She doesn't want your I'm drink. Practically melting. <laughs> she wants I, the she wants your DNA on the edge of the drink from when you drank it. Don't do I, it. I I start I start to hand over the drink and I think for a second I say would would uh Hmm. I, I turn sit. back to the crew and I say, you do realize uh, those poor Goliath crew members are still in the pit. We should probably pull them out and bring them inside as well. Uh, fine. How how many people is that going to be? She starts looking a little bit more nervous about her willingness well, to let That's you fine. In. They don't have to come inside. They can just sit in the shade um, if you wouldn't mind yes, keeping an certainly. eye on them. Certainly, it's hot out here, by all means. So I, I hand over the drink. All right. She she eagerly just kind of grabs it. She's like, oh, thank goodness. I, I spent my last Bacazoid on, on a, the last set of hot dogs he had that were not frozen, and that was, well, I suppose it was worth it. Uh, I'll need to find out some way to continue eating out here while I try and figure out how what I'm going to do. Well, I can help you with that, too. I hand over a bag of uh, cheese squigglies. <laughs> oh my goodness, what what on earth are these? She just looks they're, at them confused. They're, they're there is a list of ingredients of on the back. Hmm. <laughs> wow, this all sounds horribly carcinogenic. But I'll I'll take what I can get. And she just pops them open and starts uh, eating them and drinking from the uh, thing. And she she hands you, uh, Beatrice, her uh, staff member ID card. Thank you very much. Let's all go, right, crew. So Let's you... get those people out of here. All right, so you haul the crew up uh, through uh, sort of the, the nice little sloped path that you made uh, and place them kind of under this reflective awning. And we head into the building. Next time on the Game Cola Adventure Cast, the crew does pranks with an intercom system, inflicts great distress on some robots, and faces some familiar foes. Be there!